Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Uh, Junior with a classic uh, VW book. Today we continue with episode six, I believe. Uh, more uh, rust repair for uh, Harley, the 1973 uh, Westphalia. Today we got uh, our package, which is the outer uh, balance uh, to repair the rear end of uh, Harley. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here we go. Um, outer rear balance from United Kingdom. Price thirty-four and ninety-five cents. That's just for the part. You want to know what was the uh, shipping cost? Forty-eight dollars and forty cents more than what the part uh, is worth. But anyway, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So let's see if it was worth the investment. Here is the part. All right, so let's see how this actually mates over that surface. But before we do that, I'm gonna get some soapy water and clean it. It looks to have some kind of a oil coating on top of it. So let's go ahead and work on that. And uh, I'll bring you right back once I have actually cleaned that. So for now, that's pretty manageable, uh, no grease. So next I'm gonna go ahead and figure out what do I need to do to remove the OEM uh, rear outer balance. Uh, first, I'm gonna begin by removing uh, this lock that they actually installed there and then I guess uh, one of the things that we will have to do is figure the way to cut out that well right here as well as over here. Okay, let me check this here in the back. Um, it looks like uh, we're going to have to remove uh, some spot wells. So I guess we'll just drill them out from this side here. I think some of these wells, I can actually see them from the outside, but not all of them. So for example, I can see one there, one there, one there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get a paint, uh, a nylon disc and see if I can strip some of that and see if I can find them. I can see much better from this angle right there. I don't know if you notice it, but you can see the darker indentation. That's where the spot wells are at. So I'm gonna start from this end. I'm still gonna use my pilot bit to get it started. And that way my drill bit won't be slipping. Let's begin with this one right here.
I feel like there should be one in here, but I can't find it. So I think I might just um, stick something on top here and pry it a little bit to see if it actually does any type of a marking in here. Sometimes if you bring the light close to it, you can't see it, but I don't see anything. Now from the back, I see something around here, like right there. <laughs> okay, friends, so with the outer balance out, we can see now closely how this inside part looks. This is the original metal, so we can recondition this from inside um, out. Basically, we'll wire brush it and uh, paint over it with some POR15, and that should be fine. Um, this part here, I might just uh, make this look nicer because I don't like how that looks. Um, but I'm okay with this part here. In this section right here, I did an overlap well. The intent was to provide a structural uh, foundation, and I have it. So all I got to do is recondition this side right here. This can be rust treated better now. Um, and I may be able to just plug well these little holes right here. Maybe fix this here a little bit. And here I have some holes that I actually opened a little bit more to get some pieces of um, uh, nickel chi metal and just weld it right there. Here, this is fine. And if you look in here, in that section right there, you can see there's uh, rust. So um, I can cut a hole right here, replace this piece here and recondition that in right there. So now um, all I got to do left is um, to remove this piece right here. And I may have to plug well that right there. Uh, let's get started. So first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and grind these down. And then uh, figure out what I want to do about this piece right here. Um, who knows? I may just um, make a whole new piece for here. Like I said, it's out now. It's easier to work it. And so I'm taking advantage of this actually being out now. Um, had I known it was going to be, honestly, uh, this easy to get this out, um, I would probably have purchased this piece here and replace it. But you know, when you're working on a budget, um, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, so let's go ahead and do some prep work and then we'll do some fitment um, uh, verification and we'll take it from there. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, grind these uh, things down. Now down here, this also gives me an opportunity to make a little flange for here. I'll just tack a flange all the way down here, up to here, and that's going to supply a better support. Not to mention that I can get now a wire wheel in here and get all of that rust out and get some POR15 and paint it. This is gonna take a little bit longer than I expected, but I think it's worth uh, to invest the time in fixing it. So that's what we're gonna do.
Hello friends, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to get back to uh, Harley and I'm going to correct some of the things that I really don't like how they turn out. Um, they're okay, it's just that uh, to my standards, I think that I can do better and the fact that I have been using just a flux core um, MIG welder because I did not have the shielding gas, I think that the outcome could have been better if I would have been using uh, the shielding gas and the solid and the solid uh, mid wire. So I'm already set up. I got my shielding gas right here. So we're gonna go ahead and do some redo repairs uh, to the um, inner balance. So I'm having an issue with the outer balance that I purchased from Heritage, and um, I emailed them uh, uh, asking for support. And uh, they sent me an email uh, asking me for pictures. I've already sent them like three or four emails. No response yet. But um, uh, I think a couple of days ago, I got an email back from, from Heritage asking me for detailed explanation uh, about what was the issue. In the email, all I got was a, I'm sorry, you know, we sold hundreds and thousands of these and never had an issue with them. Well, you know what? There's always an exception to all of the uh, uh, manufacturing batch of uh, aftermarket parts that we buy. And yes, a lot of times, some of those parts, you have to slightly modify them. But this one here um, came with an issue that it's longer than it should be. And I get it, you know, sometimes, you know, things happen. Um, and yes, aftermarket parts, a lot of times you have to modify. But uh, with regards to this one here, it's slightly too long than what it should be. But there's always an exception to the norm. And that's my case today. Can I fix it? Can I make it work? Yes. Um, but the reality is that I purchased this part with hopes that I didn't have to do much modifications. And if I use it as is, it will require me to do a little bit more of modification than I expected not to mention that the part, uh, it was more to ship it here than the cost of it, which I should have just gone with my first instinct and just repaired the one that I had, just patch it up. But by purchasing the whole new balance, the outer balance, it was gonna be less work and it's turning out to be more work than um, if I had just repaired the one that I had there. Um, I would just probably been done by now. So that's the outer uh, balance uh, skin. But let me show you what's the issue. So I traced a little line right here. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, technically this here, right? This line that I trace here, this line here should be should be this face right here because if you look at this tab portion right here this will actually butt face to face right here with the fastening point at the rear end of the bus and then you take this piece here and you fold it and it pinch uh, that piece, uh, adding a support point for this right here, if that makes sense. The problem actually, it's on both ends. So if you look here, hopefully you can see that line right there. So that's also the other side of the uh, bus. Okay, so let's focus here and let me go ahead and give you a better detailed explanation. So this is the part that it's supposed to actually make up against the fitment connection in the receiving tab. Let's call this the bus tab and we'll call this the wing that falls. So this piece will be the anchoring point, right? And then this extra flange that you see here will have to be fold, right? So it would have to be fold like that. Maybe this angle so this would go right there like that and then you have to take your vise and basically fold this 
in the receiving end of your support part of the rear end of the bus, if that makes sense. Anyway, um, so let me bring this over to the bus so you can see what I mean. It's gonna be hard for me to hold the phone and try to explain it. So this will actually go right here, right? Um, that actually goes right there. But if you see, right, you see how like the top portion will actually go in like that. But then these tabs right here, you can see how they hit right where I have the markings. Now, you know, for some people, they might just think, oh, that's an easy fix. You just uh, tap this out that way and tap that, that out, out that way and it'll go in. Well, easier said than done. Um, if we do that, you may risk a chance of deformation here in this corner and in that corner. And um, maybe if I remove both of these uh, taps right here, it will go in, yes. But then I will have to modify this corner here, maybe cutting off a little bit of it and then welding this piece about a maybe a sixteen of an inch into the corner so that it works. And I am still waiting on Heritage to come back with a response. But, you know, ideally this would just go in like that. And then you take this piece right here like that. You see that? And then you bend that, then you bend that right there and it folds over that. Hey friends, so I came back and um, I did some um, repairs, some redos. Right? Um, so, one of the things that I did uh, was that I cut out uh, this piece of metal right here because it was so, so, so thin that although it sounded solid every time that I tried to weld, it blew a hole through the metal. It didn't matter how low my settings were in regards to amperage or voltage. In this area right here, I had similar issues, uh, but uh, this area was so also so thin that I opted to take my uh, uh, cone step bit and drill a hole until I got to good metal so that I can cut out a little piece of circle, piece of metal, and uh, just weld it back there. As you can see also, there's like little peating holes here that I will maybe treat it differently. But um, I think that with that, I might take another route. I might just get uh, uh, some liquid metal and um, basically fix that or get some alumi rot and just uh, solder those little holes um, but other than that, with this part right here, I'm now much more satisfied as well as I am from the other side. And here in this section, instead of just uh, cutting out little disc pieces of metal to cover 
the holes that were right there. I just cut one big piece of metal and replaced it. It looks much better than it was. I'm okay with that. Tomorrow, I might just cut these uh, tabs off because for what it seems like and the email response that I got from Heritage, they are not going to do anything to assist me with uh, this issue. So I'll go ahead and share with you some of the email traffic so you can see how they contradicted uh, themselves in the email communication back to me. So let's take a, a close look at the email that I received uh, from them where they are contradicting themselves. And they stated that they measured the same part that they shipped to me against uh, a van and it measures 957 millimeters. So clearly you can see here when you compare it to the next email and the other uh, POC that my case got uh, passed on to where they are supplying uh, different information for the same part. The second email stated that they measured the part and it measures 965 millimeters across as per the part that they supplied to me. So there's contradiction here. So let's take a look at this picture. If you look at these two end taps in this balance, as they call it in UK or balance here in the US, it looks to me like they're pointing in different, you know, opposite directions, like going left and going right. So you know, there is always a percentage error in every part, an acceptable percentage error in every part that you can actually make it fit. It's not the case with the part that they sent me. Uh, in my case, I will have to cut off the two receiving anchoring points or end tabs or wings, as I call them, uh, in my boss in order for this part to fit. That's the only way that it will actually slide in. So, and then I'll share you pictures here so you can see what I mean by that. Okay, uh, from left to right, my boss measured um, 37 and 5 eighths, which if my numbers are not wrong, that should be close to 955.68 millimeters. Whereas the piece that I got from Heritage measures uh, end to end, uh, where the uh, two wings fold 38 inches, that that's uh, converted to uh, millimeters is going to be 965.2 millimeters. I don't know how they did that, but um, again, just like I said, hey, I, I believe that the parts that they make are of a good quality. Um, however, there is always an exception to the norm, and perhaps the part that they sent me so. It's got a, a defect in it, and um, if they don't want to accept that, then I guess, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the problem purchasing a part from UK is that if you have to return it, it's going to cost you the same you pay to have it shipped to your home. Going forward, I think that I will do every single effort I can to continue to buy parts from US. And if there's a part uh, that I cannot find in the U.S., my second choice will be to then go to U.K. and see if I can get it from them. This was my first experience uh, buying something from Heritage uh, in U.K. Uh, I can't say that I am happy about it. Will I give them a second chance? Yes, maybe yes, uh, but my customer service uh, experience with uh, these two POCs was not the best. Okay, this may not be perfect, but it looks much, much better than it was. Um, so next is going to be to cut this out. And then I'm going to go ahead and trace that in a piece of metal and replace it. Yeah, that's the plan. That is the plan. And now we are inside the engine bay. And this was part of what I really wanted to make, you know, make it look nicer. Um, if you look in here now, I went back over the wells and I added some more material to it. And then I came back and I ground it uh, to a smooth uh, surface. I am much more pleased now with it, the way it looks now than before. So I just have to come back and uh, respray that. And then this piece here, 
Um, uh, this actually, I need to figure out um, how I'm going to work this section here, but pretty sure that goes right there. Yep. Or I may just uh, figure the way on how to make it. I am missing this section here and the only supplier that I know that does supply this part it's Heritage and I'm not sure if I want to actually buy this part from them because of the shipping cost. If that's the case, worst case scenario, I will. Uh, but uh, the other idea that I have is to either uh, go to a junkyard and see if I can find a bus that may have it and I can buy it from and then cut it off and come back here and weld it in or if I can maybe find somebody who has a bus that does not have an engine on and I can trace uh, that part with a piece of cardboard and then come back here and fabricate it myself. So those are some of the few ideas that I have. That's about it. But this here, although it looks strong, you can see right there that it's thin metal. I don't know why it's so solid. I guess it's because of the odd shape it has with the angles it adds uh, rigidity to it. Um, so that's pretty much it. Hey, are you still there? If so, thank you for your support. Please come back to see the next episode so you can see the outcome of the outer balance for Harley, the 1973 Westphalia. Junior out.